Hi everybody and welcome to day 38 of our Lentil series. Today we're reading from Matthew 27 verse 32 through to verse 44 and we're following the, the journey of Jesus through to the cross up to his resurrection. And before we start I'd just like to quickly pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have together. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross. And we thank you for all that the cross means to us. And we do thank you for this word, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Father, that, you know, as I speak, you speak back into our hearts individually, Lord Jesus. May this word be open to each one of us and that we all receive something from it. So I lift this time up to you and give it to you. And welcome you into this time that we have together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Matthew 27 verses 32 through to 44. Along the way they came across a man named Simon who was from Cyrene. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' his cross. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall, but when he tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. They then sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above his head announcing the charge against him, and it read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well, then if you are the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants, if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. We just thank you for this Lord Jesus, this word Lord Jesus. When we look at this, we can see, as I was reading it, I could see how Matthew, even though it's titled The Crucifixion, we can see that how Matthew has actually come at the cru crucifixion in another way. Many of the passages we read really go into depth of how Jesus was crucified. We know from the run-up, the pain and the, the phys physical torture he went through, the way he was beaten. And there are some others explain more in depth of how he was hung up upon the cross still that physical pain he endured upon the cross. But Matthew comes at it from an angle which is more emotional pain. It does mention that Jesus was nailed to the cross, but the emotional pain that he suffers. One of the first thing I noticed when I read it was, and I read it many times, was more on about the wine and the bitter gall. Well, when we look into that, we see that the wine and the bitter gall was also um, given as a pain relief. And really, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, you know, they wanted our Jesus to suffer, but they still gave him a pain relief. But what did Jesus do? He spat it out. Why did he spit it out? <laughs> Maybe to endure the full force of all the pain not just that he was going through, but that we would go through in our lifetime. That he was taking all the pain for each and every one of us. And that painkiller was for that physical pain. Not really for the emotional pain, but just to numb the physical pain that he'd gone through. So the we first thing he, I noticed that that's what he did. He wanted to endure I was probably so much as wanted, he knew he had to take all of that pain. And he suffered so much for us. And then we read further on that his clothes, um, his clothes 
were gambled for. The clothes that the the piece the item of clothing that he would have had would have been of the finest quality. It wouldn't have just been sewn up in different places um, or been patched. It was seamless. And that really shows our Jesus. Because Jesus was sinless. That garment was perfect. It was whole. It was made whole. Jesus, our Saviour, is perfect. Was made whole. He is sinless. So first of all, he... He takes all that pain for us. And he's just a reminder of who he is on the cross. He's a man that has done no sin. And he hungs there for us. Matthew continues to tell us how he was mocked. He also would have been very intimidated, humiliated, embarrassed. By leading priests, he was mocked. By the people he looked down upon, he was mocked. The humiliation from his own fa with his own family by being hung naked on a cross. I know for myself, I've been in a situation where I felt very intimidated. I had people surrounding me and asking me to tell them the truth and do this and say this and asking me questions. And I, I never responded. I knew the truth. I knew my truth. It was nothing like Jesus did for me. But now I know that. He took that intimidation, knowing that I would be in that same place. Maybe he was feeling so intimidated. And sometimes the emotional, emotional pain can be so much more than that physical pain. And the two men on the cross beside him also mocked him. You know, while they're going through what they're going through and being hung on a cross, they still mocked our Jesus. And for me, this, this word really does signify, is significant for me because I really do, and for all of us, that as much as we know that when Jesus was on the cross, that the people down below him were, were much us. We, it was us mocking him, shouting at him. But on the other side is that he hung on the cross for us, for that pain. For all the intimidation, those times of mockery, humiliation, embarrassment. For some of us, we've gone through some very deep, deep, painful, emotional things of intimidation, being intimidated by people, being mocked by people. And it's left a deep, deep wound. And Jesus really wants to, to tell you today that he took that. He's taken that and you don't have to carry that today. You can offer that to him and he will remove that for you. I know in my, when I was a, an alcoholic, you know, some of the humiliating things I was told that I'd done. And I carried those for a long time. I could look back on them and just feel so awful about some of the things in my behaviour. The embarrassment of what I'd done humiliation not just to myself but to my own family of what I'd done but now I know that my Jesus my saviour who hung on the cross for me also took that but he took it for me and the more we think about it it's like he didn't want to take that bitter gall and that wine mixture because today he says, I have taken it. I have felt your pain. I know your pain because that pain I took on the cross is that pain that I know you knew you would carry. So today I really hope that you've taken something else from the cross, from the crucifixion today. That is not just about the physical pain, that horrific torture he went through. But it's also about the emotional pain that he went through for you too. So we thank Jesus today for the cross and all that he took on that cross for us today. Thank you for joining me.